Doug Harvey's our guest today on the pregame show. You umpired in five different World Series. We hear players talk about the nerves and the excitement of playing in a World Series, but what are your emotions like as an umpire before the Fall Classic? Well, first one I had was St. Louis. I don't remember who they were playing at the time. Detroit. But, yeah, in Detroit, 68. And I walked up uh, in the dugout in St. Louis. You walk up the stairs to at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to go over the ground rules, and the game's not played until 8 o'clock at night. So you walk up there, and I've been in this stands now uh, six straight years, I think, and i worked the games in there, and that didn't do it. My hair stood up on the back of my neck. It really did. Just stood straight out. And I said, son of a gun, what happened here? And that's what happens. Uh, your first World Series, you, you know, I didn't think anything about getting in trouble, or <laughs> although they tried to put me there, but uh, I just umpired. That's that's the way I am. I, I say to everybody, when I walked up out of that dugout, every game basically, I said to myself, bring it on, suckers. There ain't nothing that you have that I can't handle. So there was never any dread or trepidation for you about blowing a big call and being forever remembered for it? No, and not only that, but you won't find one. Look through all the books, you won't find a Harvey call. I was good at what I did, and uh, I was no, you can't be afraid. I was not afraid, and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe that happens a little bit, that you get the fear of uh, God in you, and then so you kick one. I don't know. Uh, I do know one thing. I went till August 28th one year before I knew I'd kicked my first play, and uh, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good record right there. Chatting with Hall of Famer Doug Harvey today. The World Series that you umpired were all memorable. 1968, for example, you saw Bob Gibson and Mickey Lolich go head-to-head in a seven-game series. From your view, how good were those two pitchers in that series? Oh, outstanding. <laughs> Man, you look at them. I mean, you're looking at some tough people. You're looking at... I say about Bob Gibson, I hated the SOB. He was the nastiest son of a gun I ever seen. I mean... He had wanted he what he wanted. He wanted six extra inches on either side of the plate, and I refused to give it to him. So he and I fought each other quite a long time, and uh, he became the pitching coach of the uh, Atlanta Braves. And he was standing out there and standing out there next to his pitcher, and I trotted out there and I said, "What's going on?" He said, "I was just wondering whether you'd speak to me or not, Harvey." Well, that's how much we had fought, and we had fought. And I told him, "That's water over the dam. Let's go." I never ever held a grudge, and that's one of the secrets of being a good umpire. You have no right to take that game home with you, and I never did. When I left the ballpark, it was over with, unless I had to go home and write a report. If I had to do that, then I'd go home, write the report in my mo- hotel room, get it uh, in the mail, and what the heck, go have a beer. Which Bob Gibson fight do you remember the most vividly? Oh, Bob Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. He threw, I was behind the plate, he threw a two-hitter against the Mets, and it got rain, rained out after eight innings, and they had him on the radio afterwards, and he said, well, I knew I was in trouble yesterday. And the guy said, what do you mean? He said, when I looked over and saw that Harvey was at first base, I knew I was in trouble. Now, the guy just got through throwing a two-hit shutout, and yet he wants to complain about my umpire? No, I got a uh, hold of Jack Buck and told him to you uh, mind if we have a little repartee here? And he said, no, come aboard. So I did the next day, and I told the people of St. Louis, what Bob Gibson wants is six inches on either side of the plate, and Doug Harvey refuses to cheat because of being afraid of the man, because I'm not afraid of any of these people. And so they better figure out, I'm going to give them the straight plate job and nothing else. And uh, 
Jeff Buck told me the next time I was in town, he said, Harvey, it was the biggest response we've ever had to a, to a program. He said, the people called from everywhere. See, people want to see. They want to see what an umpire is supposed to do. I saw the other night, and I like to throw up, I saw a guy going into the ninth inning, and he had like a six-run lead. And he opened that strike zone up and banged them out. I could never do that. I could never do that just for the sake of getting it over with. I don't care if it's 25 to 1. I once had an 8 to nothing game, and they lost it 9 to 8. So I know what can happen, and you have no right to take over a ball game and affect it like that. You have no right. The game is too big for that, and these kids have to learn that. So that's the I, way I feel about it anyway. That's fascinating that you went on public radio in St. Louis to respond to a, a player's complaints. Do you think an umpire now would ever get away with doing that? I don't know, but like I say, I had no fear. And um, believe me, Having fear is the is the biggest toughest thing that an umpire has to fight. If if you have fear of anything, don't become an umpire because uh, what do I say to something like that? That's that's what umpiring's about. Thou shalt have no fear, and I'm dead serious about it. you. Walk in, you walk into the devil's lair, and I always said, if I had the devil. Uh, and the Lord to fight for all the souls on earth. They'd put Doug Harvey at first base. They'd put Shag Crawford behind the plate. They'd put Al Barlick at second base. They'd put Jerry Crawford at third base, and we'd swing around to the outfield. And we'd take him on any time, any place. 